I knew from the get-go it's where we belonged. It was where we were supposed to be. When you own a bowling center, it's a family. Yeah. Our bowling center was a part of our lives. A piece of me went with that place. A couple hours after the storm, we saw the roof ripped up. The insulation was blown throughout the entire building like cotton candy. Took my breath away, so we had no choice but to demolish the building. Just give up hope and just walk away. Their misfortune became the best thing that ever happened to us. And this was going to be an adventure of a lifetime. It's exactly how I, I would have wanted it to be, and more than that. I'm home. <laughs> oh my when Hurricane Ida struck a major blow to southeast Louisiana last year, I stumbled across a place that's pretty well known to people who live down the bayou. And that hurricane, of course, sat over Homa and much of the area where we are tonight for hours. And so you can see behind me the level of devastation that some homes and businesses are still dealing with. This was a bowling alley that is off uh, one of the main highways here in Homa, and you can see straight through the building. There's, of course, everything in here that looks like it was torn down yesterday. Bowl South of Louisiana was a local landmark of sorts on Grand Caillou Road for more than four decades. Seeing it that day, a month after the storm had rolled through, was jaw dropping. The business was frozen in time. And little did I know at that time the number of memories that that building held. Well, unearthing them led us to a story that was much bigger than bowling. Speechless. We say it a lot when terrible things happen. In reality, you usually find some words or sounds, sobs. But one year ago, Marie Lirette really had none. No words, just the sound of the wind like it was the wind knocked right out of her. On videos that she recorded of her first look at the damage. It took my breath away. It was literally a punch. Without getting punched, it was a punch. Hurricane Ida destroyed Bull South of Louisiana, a home of fixture for more than four decades. Marie's sister hired her to work there in 1976 at age 16. And I remember Mama going, you're not going to work at the bowling alley with Veronica. And I'm like, Ma. She worked her way up to buying the place. It was big news then in small town Homa. They hired me uh, in 1976. I never left. She and her husband, Terry, lived and breathed Bull South. This is a picture of Marie and Terry a few years back, the day Marie decided to stop hiding her hair loss from a condition called alopecia areata. My husband and I didn't have children. You know, I say that, I think maybe I, we forgot, but we were so in love with what we were doing. And um, we focused all, we focused our attention on the bowling center. If you want some tips, call. To see it as just another bowling center would betray what it really meant to people here. It was leagues and love. It was uh, O'Neill Melinda Ballland that married in the bowling center on lanes 9 and 10. A new beginning on lanes 9 and 10. It was late nights and laughs, birthdays and first dates. You mentioned first dates. Talk about those. Any memorable first dates? Oh, I can't say that. I got my wife right there. <laughs> if their decades of regulars like RJ Yugas didn't see their children take their first steps here, it's certainly where they rolled their first bowling ball. Bringing my children there when they can barely walk and crawl, putting them up on a the lane and hold the ball and push it, 
And for them to do that on the same lanes that I bowled on as eight and 10 years old, same spots, that, that's what was special to me. All right. Through the years, if balls were rolling and pins were dropping, Marie was there. Balls rolling, pins crashing, music playing the day before Hurricane Ida. Quiet, the next and the next. So I went from one extreme to uh, not nothing, you know. Overnight. Overnight. She says it was a lot like the day after Terry died a few years earlier. That moment of knowing things will never be the same, of the life you knew. Uh, it, it was, it was just, it was really sad to see it finally go down. Obviously, it's making you emotional. It's, it was a sad time. Why did you decide not to rebuild? I, I really couldn't financially. I couldn't. Um, Insurance-wise, we had enough to pay off the debt that, that I had. And I'm grateful for that. But there was no way financially that I could start over. You guys couldn't quite let it go. I kind of kept sending Marie hints. I'm like, hey, let's try to save the equipment. Let's, I think the lanes are still good. Some of them landed in Yugas's garage. Oh, wow. So what do you think when you look at all this, Marie? And it, it, uh, it's, it's, I, 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 I uh, it's just, I don't know. I, it's just amazing to see my husband's banner from the PBA up there, how he's got, this is incredible. When I look at all this, it kind of takes me back to those moments. You said you haven't bowled in over a year, almost. Why not? Um, well, I, 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 I... You just thought it would be too painful to do it? Yeah, and then knowing that I wasn't home doing it. But Bull South's story, Marie's story, doesn't end in Yugas's garage. Even with the place in shambles, a lot of the equipment had life left in it. So she messaged some bowling groups on Facebook to see if anyone wanted it. And did they ever? We had people contact me and they were telling me that they needed synthetic lanes or pin setters. When Hurricane Ida knocked Bull South down, Marie desperately wanted part of it to remain standing. She sent pieces and parts of Bull South to eight other bowling centers across the country. Some were smaller, struggling, even historic, but they were all given new life because of Bull South, including one all the way in Whirlin, Wyoming. This bowling center was one of the first to come down and get a piece of Bull South, and you are never gonna believe what the name of it is. I said, what? Wyoming Hurricane Lane. Hurricane Lanes needed her hurricane tested lanes. The Wyoming Bowling Center was named for a slot machine, not a storm. One of the owners, John Noland, hit the jackpot on a hurricane slot machine the night he named it. He says he hit another one with Bull South's synthetic lanes. Really cool stuff happened from these us getting these lanes. New life for this bowling alley for sure. Oh yeah, and it's growing. It, it didn't go Boom, it's really cool and like a firework and then it's done. No, it's, it's still growing. Nolan made sure to put the lanes in the exact same order that they were at Bull South. So lanes nine and 10 remain lanes nine and 10. Marie couldn't be happier. Making a difference for those small bowling centers, that gave me so much peace. Peace, knowing her home found a new one. But it gave Marie so much more when she went to go see it. I would have never dreamed I would have done anything like this. We take a life-changing journey with Marie after this short break. This is 
just one giant gearbox driven by one little motor. Parts. This spins like this. And pieces. A piece of my home was already here. Pieces and parts. Spring sensors. This is the rake cam. Not really sure what that exactly is, but I do know that in just the right order. This is true divine order. With just the right timing. These pins will fall. It just works. So the ball hits it. Started here when I was 12, working five nights a week until 10 o'clock at night, sitting in the back doing my homework and working on bowling machines. John Noland now owns this bowling center with his ex-wife, Michelle. I'll do some end pieces for them. She still makes rolls from scratch to serve in the snack bar to go with meals that look like family dinner, because for years, that's what it was for the Nolans. You gotta keep the, the tradition alive. The last few years have been brutal on bowling centers. It was tough for Hurricane Lanes to stay alive, to pay the bills. Hurricane Lanes in central Wyoming in a small town called Worland. It's colder than hell up here. And I thought, what a perfect name. Little did he know how profound that name would be. Hurricane Lanes will never experience the devastation of a hurricane. Can you imagine it one day just being gone? One day it's here, one day it's just no. gone. I, I would wander around here empty for some time. Even though I have another job, uh, we have seven kids, but this defines me. I couldn't believe. Way down in Homa, couldn't, couldn't that's exactly what happened to Marie Lirette. When Hurricane Ida tore her bowling center, bowl south of Louisiana, to shreds. That's a hard thing because after 40 something years of doing it, you know, your feet get knocked out from under you, wondering what's next. She worked there since 1976, later bought it and grew the bowling center with her husband, Terry. For decades, if balls were rolling, pins were dropping, music playing, Marie was there. While Terry passed away a few years ago, the home away from home they shared was gone. Felt like that was a piece of my soul. The empty and the quiet's gotta be a hole that's hard to fill. It's making you tear up now. Yeah, yeah. Because you know what those memories are and you know what that means. If somebody tomorrow said this is over, all I could say is, oh my God. Michelle and I have been through all kinds of adversities and everything else. We've tackled the world, basically and we've done it through the glue from the Bolin family here. She couldn't afford to rebuild. Her business was gone, and the pieces of the life she knew were piled in boxes. What am I supposed to do now? And I couldn't answer that. You said you haven't bowled in over a year, almost. Why not? Um, well, I... I you just thought it would be too painful to do it? Yeah, and then knowing that I wasn't home doing it. She couldn't, wouldn't just let it go. When underneath all that rubble, she knew there were pieces of Bull South that had life left in them. She posted the parts in a Facebook group to see if anyone wanted them, and bowling centers across the country sure did. Bull South's loss would give new life to eight bowling centers across the country. To be honest, I didn't know what I was getting into until I got there and saw that it had been wrecked by a hurricane. Joseph Bryant manages a faith-based rec center in Kentucky. They got 12 of Bull South's bumpers. To even get the bumpers like that second hand would be a large expense that we probably wouldn't have been able to afford otherwise. When I met Marie, I could just tell that she was heartbroken about business that she had, I guess, devoted her life to. I knew that taking the bumpers that was basically taking, I guess, a little bit of her. Marie's oil machine helped revive and reopen a historic Black-owned bowling alley in Cleveland and on and on and on. Devastating loss for Maria, right? Maria lost, I, I can't even fathom, okay? And the best thing that happened to this business, it's growing, growing, growing because of what I'm standing on. Hurricane Lanes jumped at Bull South's hurricane-tested lanes. 
Ida hit on August 29th. And just before Halloween, John and four others from his bowling family hopped in a truck to drive down to pick the lanes up. They had no idea what they were about to experience. And frankly, neither did Marie. All of our eyes were like totally, oh my God. I mean, it was crazy, the devastation. That's something until you've been there, you can't imagine it. They drove 36 hours straight, 1,707 miles, and had to sleep in their trailer because there were no hotel rooms. What did you think when you first saw Bull South? I wanted to cry. I've, Bullen's been in my blood since I was a little kid. We were probably silent for the first hour we were there to try to absorb what, what devastation was there. Marie had the same reaction when she saw it for the first time. Is this what I'm seeing? Like, is this real? When we found out that Hurricane Ida sent a piece of Homa to a place this opposite from there, we wanted to come find out what it meant to the community here. And when we told Marie that we were gonna make the trip, she said she wanted to come too. Hello? Marie? Hey, it's Katie. Hi, Katie. As we drove through the rolling hills on our way to Hurricane Lanes, I called Marie. I would have never dreamed I would have done anything like this. It was Marie's first time in an airplane in 30 years. Just a moment in that airplane, looking at those mountains, I got extremely emotional. Okay. <sighs> you ready? I'm ready. I just felt a part of me was I was coming home to something. That's how I felt, that I, a piece of my home was already here. I'm home. <laughs> oh, my God. I got to hug you. Get over here. Oh, I'm so good to see you. Oh, it's awesome to see you, too. Oh. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, it's like my soul is here. I feel it. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. This is incredible. Moments of pure joy. Marie says she chose out of pure sadness. There's no crying in bowling. Yes. Oh, I'm so good to meet you. I'm so good to meet you. A choice that led to lifelong connections 1,700 miles apart. Oh, my goodness. I just can't believe I'm here. I just can't believe I actually did this. This is so exciting. This is so exciting. You ready to bowl? Marie hadn't bowled in a year. I need house shoes and I need a house ball, yes. And it was time to do it again. This one might work, let's see. On her lanes. I can't be here and not, not at least try to throw a few balls on, on my favorite pair. M-A-R-I-E, right? Yep. Oh. I just want to stand up and get through it, but I have to do it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I promise the next shot, I'm going to keep it on the lane. A hurricane changed pieces of her life, and she changed a part of his. Nice shot, John. Awesome. If you put it all back together, maybe some of that magic's still there. They're pieces and parts of life that come together and just work. It's like divine intervention. Yeah! Like this night. Yeah! <laughs> this trip. Oh, I love it. I gotta catch up my breath. Bowling for the first time on her lanes in over a year. I'm so excited that I got to push it on here. A new piece of life begins. So are we. Oh my God. Because Marie refused oh. to let another part be the end. I'm so grateful. I, you have no idea. This journey also helped Marie live out a childhood dream. She always wanted to ride a horse in the mountains. Well, guess what? She did just that the day after we met her at Hurricane Lanes. It's a trip she never would have taken, a dream never realized had she not embraced the change that she never wanted. When those big life-changing moments are thrown at you, how you look at them really makes a difference. It's like bowling. Everything gets knocked down and you can look at it as a big old mess or like you just rolled a strike.
Le vent souffle plus tranquille.